Hey guys and gals, Nary here from Drake Wayne Gaming. It's something about sort of the gaming dragon today. I'm coming back at you in the Let's Play episode of Cryptid Crush. So, y'all, let's go ahead and jump right back into it. Alarm chain, you were up, and let's go. There we go. Okay. <clears throat> Alright. A rock under a rock. I see. Wanna talk over coffee while I catch you up to speed? You seem like a real fish out of water. Okay. And then I said, Terry, get out of town. Who knew opossums could be so chatty? Ha! <laughs> Only when it's gossip. Hey, Atlas. What's up, Flyboy? <laughs> oh, oh, wrong voice. What's up, Flyboy? We're just chilling with my good buddy. Hello. You look at the ghost expectantly. He's gonna say something, and you know it can't be good. Atlas, I, I just wanted to say, what a rebound. You got a thing for green guys and hats? The... That was a question from your Darkwater interview, wasn't it? It, it was. It was. And you thought I wouldn't notice? <laughs> it looks like Mike's out of material. Alice's eyes flicker a sharp green with a faint glow. You look terrible. Your face is going to get stuck in stuff like that, you know. Have you been taking care of yourself? Oh, I know. A, a riddle would perk you right up. Is this a prank? No. Then piss off. You got it, boss. Atlas! Yeah, you're gonna want to call a doctor for this guy. Or a priest. I do it myself, but I can't figure out how to open doors. Ugh. ugh. With a yelp, Atlas's eyes, eyes twitch and shift back to a bright red. We're taking you to a clinic. Rob, get him. Oh, bad idea. You know Edith experiments on people, right? In the hospital basement. No way! So, unless you want to see me pinned to a cork board, I'd advise against it. I don't know, that feels like a stretch. Do you have any proof? I dare you to sneak down there and see for yourself. Hmm. The sound... Oh, sounds boring. I'm interested in phantoms, not Frankensteins. Uh, what if you visited Goatman? She knows a thing or two about ghosts. That's not a bad idea. You should donate Madhouse to our collection of antiquity. No. Oh, don't worry, I'm just joking. I'll talk to Goatman after I run some errands. I gotta prove I'm the greatest stay-at-home rat man around. Lest I be banished to the crawl space. Taking a page from Taro's playbook, you spend the afternoon loafing around the house. After a lazy dinner, you wander outside where you meet up with August. August drives a blue pickup truck plastered in a scatter shot of feel-good bumper stickers. Someone scrawled a wash beyond the dusty back window. The interior is littered with crayons, coloring books, and a cup of mystery soda and a single palm tree air freshener dangling, on, dangling off the rearview mirror. You slide into the passenger seat, and the back cushion suddenly drops, giving you a mini heart attack. August quickly grabs the seat and snaps it back into place. Sorry, I forgot I broke that. How? Gus, why does your license plate say Beach Babe? Don't worry about it. Do you have an aux cord? No, but you can check my CD stash under the sun visor. You flip the visor down and start digging through August's music collection. Oh, it got awfully bright all of a sudden. Someone must have turned a light on. The CDs are much easier to read. Classical music, spa ambience, baby sing-along songs. You don't want to listen to any of this. You look over and see two massive headlights blaring in the side mirror. You shield your eyes at an imposing crimson logger truck riding the blue pickup's rear. Don't brake check. The truck swerves into the opposite lane and veers past you. Glancing at the cargo makes you uneasy. You can't quite make out the shapes in the darkness, but you swear it's squirming. August shoves his hand out the driver window and flips the truck off as it disappears around the bend. The pickup rolls through the graveyard's broken gates, its bright headlights beaming across the abandoned lot. Thank you know. Water time. Alright. The three of you hop out, and August twirls his jangly car key strung on a seashell lanyard. He whistles. Phew, we're not driving back that way. We could have been steamrolled! Gravel crunches under your shoes, your flashlight shining over mossy headstones. The singing crickets and icy wind bring a gloomy peace to those to these old resting grounds. Hurry up, slow pokes! Maybe keep it down? I'm sure there's spirits here trying to rest. You got a heartbeat? Yeah, last I checked. And stay in your lane. 
Uh, yeah, I, I sure. I mean, you're the ghost here. Oh, bug off. Gus is trying to help you. Did he bring the shovels? We're not doing that. I'm starting to doubt this spiritual well-being thing. What do you actually want, Mike? I, uh... I'm searching for myself. Literally speaking, I wouldn't get your hopes up. The three of you start looking around, hoping to find a stone marked with a mic. I found a mic! August calls out from a grave marker, gesturing you to come over. That's not me. I had no if it were me. What's your last name? Madhouse. No, I'm being serious. My name is Madhouse. Look for a guy named Madhouse. You don't remember, do you? What kind of loser forgets their own name? Sorry, I'll keep it down. Let's come back when we've got more information. You want to leave? It's, get it's getting pretty late. Then let's split up. We'll cover more ground that way. Madhouse blinks out of sight. Be careful. I want to go home. We can leave, right? I mean, Mike's in his natural habitat. Like releasing a mountain lion back into the wild. I wouldn't do that. I couldn't do that to him. Well, you've got more patience than I do. I nearly freaked. I explained the ears. Well, tour's over. I need to make a phone call. August strolls off the path, fishes out his cell phone, out of, fishes his cell phone out of his pocket, and dials up a number. How's things? I wanted to check in. Atlas, the oven is off limits. You invited Jamie over? Okay, just keep me posted. And tell Junebug Papa loves you. Not you, June. Yes, you too, Atlas. Hello, well, anybody home? I've got to be lying around here somewhere. Maybe they were right. Mike's got no clue what he's doing here, or why anyone bothered. Hey, cutie. Place your head so next to mine. Let's spend eternity together, darling. Go to hell. I saw him first. You freaks are the reason the dead don't speak. Please pay them no mind. They'll be gone by morning. Huh. Now please, allow me. Maddows feels a spectral hand touch the visor of his hat. This memento is rather precious to you. Oh. Hats off. Roll difficulty 999. Failure. Wait, what? Yeah, uh, hell of... How f no. That is something very powerful. Holy shit. The hand gives Mike's cap a gentle tug and tears it off the little ghost's head. He shrieks and reality is torn from him. Mike, you look like hell. Where have you been, bedhead? Mike's standing half asleep, slump against the studio door frame. He's face to face with his producer who's clicking a pin in her right hand, annoyed. Is it that obvious? Let's just say we're lucky this is radio. Have you been getting enough sleep? They both know the answer. Sure, but uh, what about you, Debs? There you go, water time. Okay. Heesh, there's not enough hours in the day. Especially with our holiday special just around the corner. Boss, wa boss wants things wrapped up in a real, real tidy bow. I'm holding out for this year's holiday bonus. If we even get one. Debbie takes a sharp breath. Uh, let's focus on you, okay? You're the star here. I just schedule interviews and push your buttons. Aw, oh, come on. You got me this gig. Mistletoe Mike wouldn't exist without you. You do look good in a Santa costume. They both laugh. Now, give us an outro. Like on the spot? Boss's orders. That's... that's it. Your mind clung to this? No fight, no tragedy, but a boring day job? Don't make anyone a cryptid these days. Yeah! Madhouse chokes, straining against the crushing grip of this invisible foe. He squeezes his eyes shut and bips back into your phone, but nothing happens. Madhouse has strayed too far. Oz shambles through the graveyard like a zombie. A tired zombie. He plucks a toadstool here and a moss chunk there. Her Edith's orders. Squeezing his eyes shut, he stifles a big yawn. He steps in something and nearly slips. Oz lifts his boot and peels off whatever it was at the bottom of his shoe. A mushroom? No, it's a melted baseball cap. Oz scoffs, tossing the hat aside. Gross. Mike, where are you? 
You come running, skidding to a stop as you nearly crash into the howler. You scream at the sight of, oh, it's just Oz, looking around in the dark, alone, in a graveyard. Just like you, except he's a monster and built like a sycamore tree. I'm sorry. You! August, marching through the dark, paces behind you. What does Edith want? Did she send you to come screw with me? August eyes the sky with suspicion. Where's the bird? Oz rolls his eyes. Did something happen between you two? All Oswald cares about is his so-called favorites. I'll pay my stupid bills. Quit hounding me. Oz lifts a finger and August pauses mid-rant. Oh, you go ahead. August waits patiently as Oz writes something on his little clipboard. He shimmies over and glances at the note. Oz holds it out for August to read. Oswald says I'm right. He is horribly wrong. He'll be fleeing to Alaska post-haste. Oz stomps on the wolfman's foot. Ah! You don't have time for this. Turning away, you zone out the bickering and wave your phone around trying to pick up a signal. A red splotch catches your eye. Strolling over, you squat down and pluck a hat off the ground. It's Madhouse's hat. It's hot in your hands, crackling with a supernatural energy. Uh... Guys? An eerie hush falls over the resting grounds. You look back to find the two cryptids brawling like monsters. Oz lunges aiming for the wolfman's neck, but the sleek face mask blocks his bite. August retaliates by chomping the Howler's arm, shaking him out like a chew toy. What the hell are you doing? We're not supposed to be fighting each other! August! <sighs> the monsters freeze up. August spits the Howler's arm out of his mouth with a disgruntled whine. Both of you! Sorry. Oz folds his arms and sulks. What were we doing again? I can't get a hold of Madhouse! You're sure we split up, but I didn't think he'd just disappear. I knew this was a bad idea. Give me that hat you're holding. It's Mike's, right? I'll salute them out. What, you've got a sixth sense? Oz reaches into his overshirt and bumps into the wolfman. Nah, Ghost's got this ozone sort of smell to him. Oz draws a silver dagger from his coat and cuts through the air before him. Eee! Oh. Enemy evil. Okay. Oh. Wait, what happened? Mr. Walker appears. Oh, shit. Okay. One second now. Hey, y'all. How do I change my, uh, my dice? I, uh, would like to change my dice very much. I'd get me stuck on the same dice, can I? Let's see. Uh, no. No. Um... Y'all, how do I access my dice? I have so many dice in the world. Okay. Okay. Alright. Mr. Walker appears. What is that thing? Why, you're rather rude. Not that it matters now. You'll all be gone by morning. Oz hisses through clenched teeth. Hey, that lantern's giving me the creeps. It reeks. Oz lunges, darting to the side before bashing the hilt of his dagger against the lantern. Several stab, roll difficulty, five. <sighs> Success, excellent. Shink! Oz stabs the lantern for 11 damage, and flicks shadowy threads off the tip of his blade. Oz looks to you for further instruction. Lower its defense. Lower guts to lower... Lower guts to lower physical defense, and lower brains to lower supernatural defense. Go get him! I'm in no rush. Madhouse is tethered to your phone, right? What if you tried calling him back? Kazap. Roll difficulty, seven. Success! Nice. Alright, y'all. I'm actually gonna pause it right there. Thanks, y'all. Thank y'all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell, and check out our Patreon if you can. It always helps. Anyway, I love you all. I'll see you on the next video. Bye bye!